guys, Ricky from Ricky's Pretties, and I've got a fun little video for us today. Um, there's quite a few things that I have out here, so I'm just going to kind of go over this. I'm going to show you guys how I like to do my glass blocks. This glass block I got from Hobby Lobby. It's got a stopper in the top, and they have these in small and large. This is the small size. They run about $9. Uh, when they're on sale, you can get these for half off. They also have these little stands available, and I did get this at Hobby Lobby. These are about $5. They usually are not on sale. When you buy these, though, make sure they have the little rubber caps on them um, because they do come off, and sometimes you'll get one and it'll be missing. So just make sure if you're getting one of these, they are with the blocks. So they're, they're usually, if they have them, they are with these blocks. And these blocks are found on the aisle where they have all the glass and the wood and the projects, okay? Um, but make sure the little rubber things are on there. Otherwise, you're going to scratch your table or you're going to have to figure out a way for them not to scratch your table. So make sure they have the little rubber stoppers on them if you pick one of those up. I've got a glue gun. I have a little cocktail napkin. It's the perfect size to go on this small block. I have some uh, white, plain white tissue paper. I have a couple of little, um, I forget what you call these, um, oh gosh, what are these? Little wood, um, there's a name for these and I forget what it is because my little old lady brain is drawing a blank. Um, but they're, um, they're like for scrapbooking. They're just little wood, little wood pieces. I'll think of the name of it here in just a little bit and then I'll tell you what those are. <laughs> and then this is my bronze rub that I like. I've talked about this a lot. I use it for a lot of different things. This is my Doc Holiday um, colors, fingertip, um, burnished gold um, rub. I use this a lot. And I have some little paper roses here, little mulberry roses. And I've got, this is... A coaster light I got a pack of these on Amazon for about seven bucks that's where you get these um, and they are great they will they have an on off switch they have a blink they have a slow blink and they have it on all the time so this is kind of cool they have different ones available but they are called coaster lights and you get they come in a big box like this, so you get quite a few of them for the money. Um, and yeah, so that's where I got those, Amazon. And I got this, uh, the little clear rocks. I got these at the little marble things at um, Dollar Tree. This is some uh, velvet ribbon. They have these in a few different colors at Hobby Lobby. Um, sometimes you can get these for 50% off. I didn't. Um, it cost me five bucks for this roll, but I really wanted it because I thought it was pretty. They have these in pink, and this is like a little shell. I forget what this is called. Um, it's called Lux Velvet Ribbon, and the color is Petal. And then, of course, my varnish that I like. This is my gloss varnish that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. Water-based. I love this. I use it all the time. Mod Podge. We've got some little scissors. Um, a couple of brushes, and I have paint in colors that match my napkin. So I've got green, yellow, brown, red, and white. And of course, I've got a palette here. You can use a plate, you can use a paper plate, whatever you want. Um, and you don't have to use these. I've always, I've always said this. You can use, if what you have is the bottles, you can use the bottles. As long as it's acrylic paint, it will be fine. A little bowl to put my Mod Podge in, an extra napkin here, and um, we're going to get started here in just a minute. I'm going to set some of these things aside, and then we'll get going. Okay, guys, I have separated my napkin out. This had three layers to it, so um, when I peeled off the first layer, I set that aside. I'm going to keep that, and then um, I've got my... Um, of course, my image layer here. And I have cleaned my glass with alcohol. Make sure you remove any sticky residue from any stickers that are on here, any fingerprints, and just go over it with alcohol so that your project will stick. 
and I've got some Mod Podge over here. I went ahead and got some plastic wrap. You will need plastic wrap um, to do it the way that I'm doing it. And I'm going to go ahead and Mod Podge my image down. My image is really just going to go to the inside square right here, so I'm not going to go, you know, all the way to the edge with this right now. heard of people using hairspray on their napkins that is not something I have tried so I'm not doing that okay and this is a reverse deck polish so I'm going to turn my image upside down and I'm going to center it best I can onto my block gently smooth it down with my fingers and now I'm going to take my plastic wrap Lay it over the image and then really smooth it. Gently peel that off. Lay that aside. And now I'm going to go over this once again lightly going from the center out with my Mod Podge. And now I'm going all the way to the edge with it. And because I want my image to stand out on the opposite side, I could either let this dry and paint the back of this image, or I can use the piece of napkin that I set aside, the plain white piece of napkin, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead, and while this is wet, I am going to lay this napkin down. Directly over my other image as best I can, as close as possible. And I'm going to take my wrap, I'm going to set it down, and I'm going to smooth this down. This is the back of our project. This is going to be the back side of our project. So it doesn't really matter if the image is showing this way or not because this is going to be the back side. Alright, we're going to gently peel that up. And we're going to go over the same way with the Mod Podge from the center out. Making sure that the Mod Podge goes over all areas of the napkin. Very lightly. You don't need to put pressure on this or you will tear your napkin. So just use light pressure. Use a moderate amount of Mod Podge so that it soaks through. You don't want to completely drown it, but you want 
you want to load your brush up and then spread it out from the center out. Okay, we're going to let this dry now, and when it dries, we're going to come back and I'll show you what's next. Okay guys, as you can see, everything is dry back here, and so we're going to turn this over and we're going to work on the front now. We can see our image is really nice, and um, I finally remembered what this stuff is called. This is chipboard. You can get it in the scrapbooking section. I think Prima makes it. There's a couple of other makers. I got this from my friend Debbie at Kiki Sale, along with these little flowers. And these are going to go up here. I'm going to place these up here, you know, like, like so in the corner. So I'm not going to do anything up here. I'm really just going to do um, maybe just a little bit down here in this corner. And I've gotten out my paint colors over here i have red i've got the brown yellow green and white and the first thing i'm going to do i've got a pointy brush and the first thing i'm going to do is just um i'm going to mimic these flowers right here i've got this you know laying flat so i can't really see the flowers here so i'm just going to use this as a reference um now we're just going to kind of mimic you know what we see here these little cherry blossoms that are on here and so um, for this I want to use my lightest color so I'm going to get a glob of white I'm going to wet this down just a little bit these are acrylic so they're going to need they're going to need a little bit of water and I'm just going to get a little dab of red because I really just want that a light light pink And some more white like so I know that's in shadow it's my light that's in here <laughs> so light baby pink and you can kind of see these are kind of little reverse teardrop shapes so I'm gonna paint a little teardrop just like so And then this one looks more like a heart, so I'm going to paint like a little heart right there. And another teardrop, and this doesn't have to be exact. I'm just kind of mimicking what I see. And then we'll put another teardrop here. And another little teardrop here, okay? And then these are more or less just kind of, you know, we'll do one like this. And this is kind of like a little clamshell shape. So we're going to do a little clamshell right here. It's like we're painting a little clamshell. And then here's another little petal right there. And then we've got a little kind of a teardroppy there. And a teardrop here. And that'll work. That's perfect. We don't have to have exactly as many of these as they do. And I might just put a little bud here just for fun make that an actual teardrop for the bed 
Okay. And now I'm going to mix in a little more red because I want a darker pink for the inside of these flowers. And I'm going to take a little brown too just to kind of make it more of a mauve -y pink. See what that did? It muted that down to where it's more mauve now. I'm going to rinse my brush out a little bit. I've got some paper towel over here that I'm going to use. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take and go just to the inside of these and just put a little bit. I'm just going to do one little tiny brush stroke on each one of those petals. Okay. Now I'm going to go around the inside of this one just like that. And another little tiny brush stroke on each one of these. It doesn't really matter if it's not completely dry yet. That's not a big deal. Okay. And maybe a little bit down here. Just like that. Okay. Now, that looks pretty. I like it. And now you see how the very middle of this is more of a like a yellow orangey color so i'm now going to take a little bit of my yellow and mix it in a little bit of this mauve and add just a dot of red Maybe a tad more yellow. And that's going to give me my orangey color. And I'm going to dot that in the middle. I'll brush a little more wet. My acrylic's drying out. Just like so. I might add just a little more red and yellow to that. Make it a little darker. Okay. And maybe just the hair down here. Alright, I like that. And now, we've got our little highlights for our little centers for our flowers. So, we're going to take straight yellow and put little dots for our flower centers just like so okay and now we're done with our little flower and we're going to paint some leaves now and for this, we're going to need uh, several different shades of green. So I'm going to get some green. And I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to get some yellow. And I'm going to dredge it through. So I've got darker. On into this yellow. We might want to add a little brown to make more of a muted green color. Now we're going to add some white. None of our leaves over here are that dark. So we're going to probably just kind of stick with our, with our lighter greens down here. Our lighter muted greens that we have. We're adding a little brown to that to mute it out. Okay. And so what we're going to do now is I'm going to wet my brush down. And 
I'm just going to kind of dredge through here. These little flowers have like We're going to make the little leaves that come off of the flowers. We're going to kind of curve a little stem around for that. And you can see this does not have to be perfect. We're just making like little rounded diamond shapes. And by that I mean a diamond is like this. But we're rounding that off like that. And we're just kind of putting them out there in random fashion. You know, not going over the tops, you know, or anything like that, and that's fine. We may do another one or two of those down here, just to kind of splash in some colors. My paint's are drying out down here, so let me add some water to it. When you're working with acrylics, you've got to add water pretty often. Add another little stem, maybe another little stem here, that'll work. Okay, I like it. I'm going to add a little bit of dark, darker green in with some of this, maybe a little more brown to it. Pull it through some of that lighter. And just kind of go around the outside edge with them. Just kind of give them a little more depth. Pretty easy, huh? Not too bad. It's not as hard as it looks, especially if you're not real picky about the way that it turns out. Okay, I like it. I'm going to add just a little bit of darker colors into our flower now that that's dry. Make them stand out a little bit more. And I mix some red and some brown for this, for that. And I'm going to add a little bit to some of my leaves as well. Not all of them, but some of them. Okay. Maybe this one. Alright, I like that. And we are going to leave that alone because... That doesn't have to be complicated. Um, it's just really simple. And you can see we've just kind of given the impression of some cherry blossoms like what's in the napkin. And we'll need to let this dry. 
and when that dries um actually you know what while that dries what we can do is our next step which is we're going to be putting some of this bronze rub around the outside edge so let's go ahead and do that while we wait for that to dry and i'm just going to go around lightly This doesn't have to be neat either. You just want to put it around the edge. We're just going to kind of frame it with this bronze is what we're doing. If it gets a little messy, that's okay. The less perfect it is, the more handmade it looks, in my opinion. A little bit of extra in the corners because I like that. Okay. A little extra right in there. All right. And that's beautiful. I like that a lot. That looks great. I might add just a little bit up here now that I'm looking at it. Tilting it up to see. It doesn't take that long to let the, to dry. And it needs a little more over here. You know, just kind of make it look even. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn it around. And I'm going to do this side with it up. You know, because we can't lay it down because we're waiting on our, um, we're waiting on our flowers to get dry but we can still do this side we can just do one little side at a time here so you won't be able to see me doing this but we're doing the exact thing that we did over there we're just turning it This rub is kind of messy, so, you know, have some paper towels handy, guys. bottom section needs a little bit of dust on there. It's okay, it'll rub off. <laughs> now, if you let it dry, it won't rub off, so any little boo-boos you want to get off right away. You know, just mind your other side where you've got your, you know, paint. You don't want to be touching that. Okay, guys, that is good. It's beautiful. I will show you here in just one second. Let me get my hands wiped off. Just a hair. Let me get some of this off and then I'll kind of tilt it up and show you what we've got here okay so we have our painted side and then we have our Mod Podge side and even though this is the back it's still gorgeous all right it's beautiful so we're gonna go ahead and let this painted side dry I'm going to just kind of set it upright for that. And when that gets dry, which will just be in a few minutes probably, um, I will come back and we'll do the next thing. See you guys in a few. All right, our paint is dry. And what I want to do next is give this kind of a frosty look 
not all over because I want my image to show. Um, so I want part of my glass to be clear, but I do want it to be frosty, you know, in this area here and below. So I have torn off two little pieces of tissue paper, one to fit here. I might need to tear just a little bit of that edge off. So one's going to fit here. And then I tore another little piece just to kind of go um, up this side just a little bit. Uh, let's see, how did I have this? <laughs> uh, which way did I have it? I don't remember. Which way did I have that going? I don't remember, guys. Uh, I think it was kind of like this. Yeah, so it's kind of like that. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to go ahead and put this down. Put this little corner down here. And I'm not going to lay it over my bronze, you know, very much. I'm just going to get it basically right where I had it. And now I'm going to go ahead and brush over that. And it won't matter if I do get it on my bronze because, you know, it dries clear. And we're going to put some sealer on this too in a little bit. But it is important to let your paint dry before you do this stuff. Otherwise, your paint's going to come off when you put your Mod Podge on top of it. So make sure it is 100% completely dry. And I'm just kind of guesstimating where this is needing to go. Um, probably overextending it a little bit because I do want the glue down. So my tissue paper will stick. And now I'm going to put this on here. Like so. Just kind of smooth that down. I need to get a little bit more up under here. Alright, and now I'm going to get my saran wrap that I had earlier. I'm just going to lay that down and I'm going to smooth it down. Get it pushed down good. Try not to tear it. If it does, it's really not going to matter. But you want to try not to. So just kind of gently smooth it and pat it down. Okay, and then we'll gently lift this up. Alright, and just like we did the napkin on the back, we're going to go over this again with our Mod Podge. Going from the center out. I did get a little bit over my bronze, but that's okay. We can always go over it with the bronze again if we need to. So I'm not real worried about that. You want to make sure you get this covered good and that you don't have bubbles in it. Tissue paper is not quite as, you know, it doesn't tear as bad as napkins do. So you can, you know, put a little more pressure on it than you could if it was a napkin.
and just give them a good coat. All right, we're gonna let that dry. And after it dries, I'm going to go ahead uh, off camera to save time. I'm going to apply a coat of varnish to this all over. I want to make sure everything's sealed down good, including the bronze. So I'm just going to apply it to the entire front part of the glass. And I'm going to let that dry and probably put on two coats, lightly sand it, and put a third coat on. And I'm going to do the same thing to the back. So I'm going to come back after I get all of that done and then I'll show you what's next. Okay, everything is dry and you can see it's all sealed. Um, I did go ahead and um, put the varnish on and it is all clear. I didn't sand up here because I didn't want to risk scratching the glass. I just sanded around where I put my napkin and my tissue, I'm sorry, my tissue paper on the front and then on the back where we put our napkins, I sanded and then put a final coat of the varnish on. So there's uh, four total coats on this, basically. And um, what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and decorate this with our chipboard. This is a chipboard. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. I finally remembered the name of it. And our little um, flowers that we have here. That we're going to be decorating with. We're going to go ahead and put those on. We're going to put our ribbon on and our light. So we're going to finish this project up now. I'm just going to trim the stems off of these. And mash it down. I have some E6000 and I have a little bit of hot glue going on over here. And I'm going to place the bigger leaf first. I think I'm going to put it about right here. I'm going to use mostly E6000 for this. I'm just going to put it around. Sparingly, you know, so it's not going to leak. beyond the perimeter of that. And then I'm just going to put a little spot of hot glue down just to kind of hold it in place until it sets. I'm going to set it right here. A little, little spot there. Might be able to get that off with some alcohol. I'll try that in a little bit. If not, maybe I can rub it off. Once it dries, I'm not going to mess with it yet. I'll mess with it here in a little bit. Do I want it to go this way? Or do I want it to go this way? I think I want it to go right there. I've got, I put a little bit of, sorry, I know it's getting out of frame there because I can't see. I'm just going to put a little dot of hot glue there along with the E6000, clean it up as much as possible, and then stick it down. Okay. Now I'm just going to position my little flowers. Let me see if that's where I want it to go. I think that'll work. To kind of get a roundabout place. Stick that stem down a little bit. Okay. Put 
that in place until it sets. place this one next because I don't have much room for it up there in its little corner a little dab of hot glue stick it down and hold and then this is our last one here Let me save a thousand. Hot glue. And stick it down. I'm going to tilt it up so I can see. Okay, I really like that. All right, so we're going to leave that where it is. Let's stick that leaf down a little bit. Turn that just a hair. See some glue up under there, and I don't want to see it. Of course, you're not going to see it when you're looking at it straight on anyway. It's just because I've got it this angle. Okay, and the next thing that we're going to do is, while that dries... We're going to turn this upside down because we're going to put our light in the middle on the bottom and see how this has this, this glass block has a ridge in the middle and our light is too big to nestle down in here. So we're going to have to trim the edges off. And we're going to have to trim a little bit in order to get it to nestle down in there. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this. I don't know which pair of scissors is going to work better for this, but I'm going to try this one first. So I'm going to trim that edge. And then I'm going to trim this edge. And then I'm going to see. Yeah, so it goes down in there now, but... I've got this little, this little ledge here that's stopping it from being able to go down all the way. So, what I want to do is, um, I don't have a pen, so I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. So it's going to sit in here straight this way. Let's move this up a little bit so y'all can see. So, it's going to be... You know, it needs to sit in here this way like that. So I'm going to kind of eyeball the center. Like right here. Okay. And I'm going to use my little scissors. And I'm going to cut a notch. Like that. Where this goes. Well, this isn't the easiest thing in the world to do. That's why I'm using my little scissors. Plus, there's a plastic tray in here, so we're going to have to go at it like this from the top and this doesn't have to be pretty it's not gonna show so don't worry if it's kind of ugly 
we're just removing that foam from that center center piece right there so that that can set down right on on our um, glass block. Sorry, I can't work and talk at the same time, y'all. That's not conducive for making videos, but that's just the way I am. Okay, so I've got that, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. And I'm going to try to get it like right in the same spot. You don't want to cut the plastic because you need these little, you know, you want your light to still work. So make sure you don't cut in too far. And we're just going to work it this side now until we get it done. Okay. And it probably wouldn't hurt anything if that was sticking up just a little bit. It's just, you know, it's me. I don't want it to, so I don't, I'm not going to have it do that. <laughs> I'm picky about things like this. Picky, Ricky. I've been accused of that. <laughs> okay. So now, you can see now that it's going to sit. You know flat for us now which is good that's what we want okay so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna make sure that we didn't mess anything up nope the light works that's great okay so now we're gonna peel this 3m backing off of it and we're just gonna stick it down and that's really sticky so it's not gonna go anywhere once we put it on here so we're just gonna eyeball it put it in the middle and stick it Okay, now that's not going anywhere. All right, now what we're gonna do is turn this back up, the right side up, and we're going to take our little lid off of here. I'm just gonna pry that up, and now it's time to, this is gonna be a little noisy. I apologize in advance for that. I'll try to mute it, but we're just gonna put our little glass marbles in here. I'm just going to hurry up and do this. I'm going to mute the sound during this part so that you don't have to hear all the jingling. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to put our cap back on. This cap is kind of ornery. It's, I got one that's got an ornery cap and it don't want to go in here good. It doesn't want to lay right. It keeps popping up. But, you know, we'll get it in there. But they just have to stick up a little bit not going to show. Okay, so now you can kind of see we have marbles, the clear marbles inside, and that is just going to be gorgeous when we light it up. I'm just going to put that on so you can kind of see what we're going for here, and it's really pretty. I love how this looks. Now all we have to do is put our ribbon on. Let me get this unwrapped here real quick. This, uh, this is a little folded up there, so I'm going to just trim that off. I don't know which scissors will work better. My little ones. I need some new scissors, y'all. I really do. Gotta get some new scissors. Note to self, every time I go to the hobby store, I forget. Hobby Lobby, I forget scissors. I don't know why. I just do. 
this ribbon is gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Okay, so we're going to set that down. We're going to make a bow on top, y'all. So I want it to be a little extra so I can make a knot up here. All right. So I'm going to cut it about right there. that up in a little bit and we'll center it okay and I'm just gonna let it sit just like that I'm going to peel some more off of here. I want this to be nice and pretty, but I don't want it to be like totally overpowering. So I'm just going to do like a couple of little folds here. And what I'm doing is I am, I've made, I'm just going to loop it like this, and I'm going to make another loop, okay, and then I might want that just a little tad bigger, just a tad, okay, and then I'm going to twist it so that my velvet side is up, and I'm going to make another loop, a little larger than the first one. Okay, and then I'm going to twist it again, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Another loop, just a little bit larger, and then that's all I'm doing. So I'm going to cut that. I'm not worried about where I'm cutting it right now. I'm going to trim it off in a minute. So right now it's just going to go here. Okay, and now... We're going to center this in the middle here. We're going to hold on, hold on to that. And we're going to tighten that up. And we're going to make a knot right here in the middle. Just like that. Now we're going to kind of spread our bow out a little bit. And just kind of work at it until it gets to the shape that we like. And I like that. I think that's pretty. Okay, and so now I'm just going to shape this a little bit. I want to do tails. I think I want to do tails. So I'm going to cut like a little V here. Just like that. That is so cute. And I'm going to do this side. It's a little short, but I think it'll still work okay. Let's see. 
There we go. Got a little V-cut there. All right. And I'll do the same thing to this one down here that's sticking out a little bit. See my little tail there? I'm just going to go ahead and cut a little V in it too. Instead of cutting it completely off. There we go. Shabby chic bow. Okay, guys, that is really pretty. I love it. I'm going to kind of show you what it looks like. Our on buttons down there. We've got flash. We've got solid. And I'm going to clean this little glue spot up and put it in its little base. And to do that, it's just going to slide right down in here. It just slides in like this. And then it sets. Isn't that beautiful? I hope you guys have enjoyed this project. I'll be taking some pictures in just a minute. Um, so you can see what this looks like sitting out on the table. And I really hope you guys have had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I'm looking forward to another year of videos with you guys. And if you would, please like and subscribe if you did like this video. Invite your friends so that my little channel can grow. All right. Thank you guys for being here. And I wish everybody well in the year 2022. Bye-bye.